Um, but Eddie, how did you, how did the whole Albus Shaw Cal West combo come to your attention? Because and then you bring them to how did that whole story go? So me and Al, so I used to I I started DJing, um, and I I I did a house party um, with a friend. Um, that ended up blowing up really big. And then from there, I, you know, I guess who, everybody who's who was at the house party. And then I started getting booked for parties. Next thing you know, I was doing the high school. I was doing, I was DJing at the skating rink. I was doing all the parties. Um, but I met Al in, in school, in high school. And then Al, you know, we both liked music and he was cool. And he would come, um, you know, with me to the parties and stuff like that. And then he actually... Um, he actually started, you know, I had moved to the basement and put my DJ equipment in the basement and kind of that thing where you move, you, you know, you think you're, you know, you're a teenager now, you got your own apartment kind of. <laughs> Al actually, he, he stayed in New Rochelle, so it was easier. He would just, he started, he started crashing at my place. So he stayed with me. He ended up, you know, crashing in the basement because I had the whole basement and stuff like that. Um, so he, so we were like every day, like hanging out. He would come with me to the party, stuff like that. Um, and the thing is, I had all the records, and then I would get a drum machine from time to time. But Al had a four track, so I Al actually wow. had a four track cassette player. And then he's the one who introduced me to Navelle Hodge, who was a keyboard player. He was like, "Man, wow, guy man. Navelle, he's a dope keyboard player." So we then. It was actually before we even started working with Heavy, it was me, Navelle, and Al first. And then Roy wow. introduced me to Heavy. I knew who Heavy was because from Mount Vernon is small. You know who everybody, but I didn't hang out with Heavy every day. I didn't even know he was a rapper like that. It was just, I was doing a lot of parties. And so one day I was doing a party at the um, the boys club and um, I was getting, setting up for a wedding reception. And Troy comes in the side door with Heavy, and he says, man, this, you know, this, this is my you know, friend, Hev. He's trying to make a record. This is Eddie. This is Eddie F. And then we met, and then we became, you know, I knew him, but I didn't know him, know him like that. We, then we, we connected. We instantly hit it off. We started hanging out every day. And then Hev became another person that would come to the basement. So at that point, it was, then it was me, I'll be sure, um, Navelle, and Heavy in the basement and we would make demos. Um, and so, and I told a little bit about that earlier, how we, we went to meet uh, Andre. Um, we, we were trying to meet Russell Simmons where we met Andre, but fast forward to how did Al, I get Al to, um, to Uptown. So we mm. ended up, we got our deal with Uptown and then Al was still making demos. Um, and, and actually he was a rapper before he was a singer. He rapped in the style of Slick Rick and Dana Dane. And so he would uh, also sing, and he would sing his own hooks. And they, and him and Kyle continued to do demos. And one day they came up with this demo, Off On Your Own. It was a really great demo. He played it for me. I think he played it for Heavy too. And, uh, and I got it. And I think we were thinking about, it, it might have, I think it was going to be like maybe a rap record. I think it was it was singing. Al had the verses on and everything, but I think Heavy might have been thinking about, you know, making it one of those songs where Al sings the hook and he raps. So I had to tape myself, and I thought it was great. And I said, man, to myself, I didn't tell anybody. I said, I ain't even tell Al. I said, man, I think Al could probably get his own deal off of this. I'm taking this to Andre. I just said it to myself. So I took it to Andre. I gave Andre the demo. Um, he played it and he, he, I remember there was some, there was some other, there was some women there, uh, that he was with and they were having lunch or this and he played the tape and it and he liked it. He said, man, he said, Oh, that's your man. He said, that's your, your man, light skin with the, with the curlies. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you know, um, and he's like, okay. And I, and the reason why I say that is because one of the women from the table ended up saying, Oh, that's. Eddie, that's your friend, the light skin guy. Oh yeah, Andre. He's working, he's working. <laughs> so it was kind of like full sign, um, and then I ended up telling Al. I played the demo. Andre wants to meet with you, um, and the rest, you know, as they say, is history. I don't know how everything went, but I'm assuming Andre took the tape, got it to Benny Medina. They gave, gave put it, gave it to Quincy Jones, entered it into the contest. Quincy was like, "Oh, I love this," and 
the innovators, and next thing you know, I was out of here. He was on the launch pad. He was just like, Phew. um, and that was something that I just did because we were in the door, and it was my friend, and I was like, okay, we're in the door. How can I help my uh, my other friend get in the door, um, and get a deal? Um, and then little did I know, and now you know, I realized this years later, 20, 30 years later, um, I'm helping my friend and I, and I actually confirmed this with Jimmy, uh, like maybe five years ago. I said, man, you know, I never thought about, it. I was just, I was just doing this to help out, but I inadvertently helped myself, helped us help the whole company because when Al blew up and Jimmy confirmed this for me, when Al blew up, Al blew up and got so hot on fire that Uptown actually was started even leveraging Al. Like, yo, if you want, I'll be sure you're gonna have to <laughs> this record or you're gonna have to play this 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 other record we got because so um it just and I'm just saying that to say you just never know how um karma's gonna work doing something good for somebody else. It ends up helping you, you end up helping yourself when you're just trying to help somebody else. And um and that was just the energy. And uh, and I, I'm just happy to say that I have a whole group of friends that I went through high school with, that I graduated with or graduated behind me, that I could say I, I helped as many people as I could just get in the game, get in the business, whether they were producers, writers, artists, you know, um, because that's that's what it was about. That's actually how Untouchables got, got um, formed. It didn't get formed. I didn't sit down one day and say, I want to have a company. I want to have a record company. It actually was a fluke. It was, um, I was trying to get Pete Rock and CL Smooth, I mean, I'm sorry, Pete Rock and Navelle signed with Uptown as producers. And I was calling Uptown every day and they were calling me, what they say, what they say. And then I think a month or two after they were waiting to get signed as producers, one day uh, Navelle and Pete called me on a conference call and say, man, why don't you just manage it? And I had never thought about being a manager or anything. There was no untouchables. There were, but I was a person who organized and helped people and had suggestions of how to get things done. Um, so they asked me to do it, and then I said, "Okay, well, let's come up with a name, and then you know, all right, let's figure out a structure and whatever." And then I asked uh, one of our lawyers, "Hey, could you put together a management agreement?" You know, I I had no intentions of starting a company. That's how untouchables got started. It got started because my friends asked me to manage them. And I said, let me put together a company to do it. And then one thing led to the next. They were the first two. And then Dave Hall would come around and he asked me to, to help him. Um, he was actually working on Brand Nubians. He already had a song on Brand Nubians, but he was trying to get his business straight. And I was like, okay, I, you know, I'll help you. I had knew Dave because Dave, was one of the guys that hung out with us when we had the DJ crew. He would come around with my man, Gary Peterkin. Um, we had the DJ crew and he was one of the guys with us. So I knew him, but I didn't know him as a producer. I just knew him as a cool guy who would hang out with the party. Um, ended up helping him with his situation, getting his business straight with uh, with Brand Nubians and the song with Grant, with, with, with Grand Poobah. And, um, and then he joined the Untouchables. And then, and then, Kenny Smooth, who um, was always a cool guy in the neighborhood, he would come around, and, 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 you know, and as Kenny says today, he was like, yo, I'm not getting left out. I'm, yo, I need to be down, I need to be down with the untouchables, yo. I'm me, like, and um, I ended up signing him. And that's kind of, that's how untouchables got put together. It was like friends saying, yo, manage me, put me down, and then that's how the whole thing happened. And then we became kind of like an engine for Uptown. We were just, it's like, what's the assignment? Like, what needs to get done? Who needs records? Who needs to get help? Who needs to get fixed? What needs to get remixed? Um, and it would, a lot of times it would be just based on the um, direction of, of Andre or Kurt Woodley or whoever the creative person was in charge. We need this. We need an up-tempo. We need something that sounds like this. You know. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part of Halftime Chat. Please remember to subscribe, share, and comment. But most importantly, why don't you become a member of Halftime Chat? We've got amazing videos, amazing perks, and um, being able to support the channel.
But anyway, thanks for watching. Take care. I never participated in that category. Right, somewhere in between. Well, even loving us. On which I did miss you. Get it. I miss you. 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 I love, I love all different genres.